Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of the Weekly Seashell Devlog. I can't believe I just called it an episode, but here we are. We have not too much progress today, but we do have some progress. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm a student studying computer science and linguistics with a minor in game design, and I'm working on a game called Seashell. If you want to know all about the game Seashell, you can check out the video either here or here. I still haven't gotten the corners down for where I pitched the game during my intro to game design class. But without further ado, my energy levels are much better now. Decently restorative break over the past week or so. So in today's devlog, we're going to quickly start off with the community section because I forgot it last week. And I also wanted to thank everybody for the supportive comments on the last one. Then we're going to jump into the progress that I've made this week, followed by a cool article that I kind of stumbled across, as well as the goals for next week and actually the next four weeks. I've got like a nice sweater on because I was doing a experiment run today. Anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for the supportive comments on last week's episode. Federix, Michael, and Ryan both left comments about the topic of the devlog in a sense. And I just wanted to emphasize those points because I'm really glad that those were the takeaways. For me, motivation coming as a result of action is something I've heard so many times that I didn't really think it would have been something new. And I wanted to emphasize that. I also wanted to put some special emphasis on Federick's comment. The fact that at least one person took something away from me showing myself as unproductive was something I really appreciated because that's something I've strived to do in many different forms. Just very briefly, I deleted Instagram a while ago. I reinstalled it not too long ago, deleted the app again, long story. But I deleted it because I got tired of seeing everybody best lives. It made this in it made this image in my head of like, oh, everybody's got such great lives. You know, my downtimes are irregular. And they're not. When I started this devlog series, I knew there were going to be weeks when I got no work done. And knowing me, that's not really that deep. I, I knew going into the devlogs that there were going to be weeks with no progress. And I knew when I started them that those weeks would arguably be the most important of the series. There are kind of two reasons for that. The first reason is just so I can look back and say, you know what? I, you know, I hit zero here. Just, just take it small a day by day, week by week. But the second reason is to show everybody that I'm not always productive. In my day in the life during the summer or whatever, I mentioned so many times throughout the recording, I think only only two or three made it into the, the final cut. I mentioned that this is not every day, that some days are really lazy, that I'm emphasizing this day because I record it. And that's always going to remain true. I've done maybe two hours of work on Seashell Total this week. Really, that is about it. The videos can always make it seem like, ah, oh, there's so much going on. You might see my calendar and weep, wow, you do so much, but there are times when I just fall apart. Everyone does. And last week was kind of one of those times. You know, that being said, sometimes if you're more productive than you were yesterday, that's great. Don't compare yourself to, you know, the level of someone else or the, you know, amount of progress someone else has made or the amount of work someone else does or how many things that someone else does. It's all about you compared with you yesterday and you tomorrow. Long story short, thank you guys for your support. I'm glad you took something away from it. In regards to the devlog before that, I don't remember if I totally got to these comments, but I just want to follow up, I guess. Matt, I hope your Slack bot thing is going well. I believe you remembered mentioning that. It was cool that you enjoyed also seeing Relanota. I really enjoyed including it because including other projects makes the devlog feel a bit more expansive. <laughs> and Ryan, I hope your lab report and your semester in general is going on pretty well. Mine's personally just getting ramped up now with a bunch of assignments coming out, but I'm excited for it. Also, a more recent comment on the video by Polymake was, don't start in the engine with C++ functionality. It would be akin to ignoring the entire editor interface face in Unity or Godot and writing everything through command and Notepad++. Very duly noted. I've been working on Toon Tanks a little, little bit this week. Probably that's where about an hour of the seashell work comes from. And it's been getting into blueprints and I see how useful they can be. So this is kind of a conscious reminder for me to say, hey, blueprints are really important. Keep doing it. So what's an engine if you're not going to use it, right? Now, speaking of working on Toon Tanks, we've got some more progress from last time as well. Not as much of an exciting note, and I'll throw up an image in case this isn't too clear. I got the overhead sketch of the seashell thing done. This is the image of the living room and stuff that I've just had in my head for the last like four years. Ever since my friend told me about this, this is what I envisioned, or so I believe. To get into this drawing a bit more, let's go ahead and flash back to yesterday when I finished up the game loop. All right, so it feels like it's been a while since I've been in front of the camera. This hair needs to get chopped off, but Thursday night, I finished the game loop. Uh, with our current sprint being the game loop and just the sketches, it's going pretty well. A friend of mine recommended that I play Dark Souls 3. I got it because it was 75% off and I've yet to play it, but Dark Souls 3 keeps coming up in my game design classes, mostly for his game loop. So what I started off doing was I wrote out the Dark Souls game loop. And the idea of having a game loop is something that your game is structured around that is familiar to the player and keeps the game cycle the same, but does iterate and changes over time. Then I worked on Seashell's game loop. Now, I looked the Dark Souls game loop for a lot of inspiration in terms of how I can repeat in certain phases. So I broke mine up into three phases as well. I mainly went with explore, 
what you do with the item and then the mini world in general. And then I went on Lucid Chart and I'll throw a diagram up here and I went ahead and put together the game loop. It might look complicated and I probably didn't use the shapes properly, but you start the game, wonderful. Then you explore the house a little bit. You start in a given room and then you trigger an event to unlock more environments. So for example, if you are coming back from another level, you might have a door that's unlocked because a few days have passed in the real world or something like that. What I wanna do is maybe have options for you to explore through the game with past items to find Easter eggs or additional things to the game. You don't do that, whatever, you go and find the next item, which then triggers the finding the item cutscene, I guess, a transportation sequence, little transportation sequence, and then we go to the mini world. And this is where the meat of the game is, pretty much. You go to the mini world, and there'll be a, a small item or mechanic tutorial. You introduce the main character, that's the first thing I want the player to see. I want the player to get a vibe of the world, of the environment, through this mini tutorial section. So for example, the seashell, I'm changing from light to echo location, because I think that makes more more sense. One of the critiques I got from my intro to game design professor was to make the mechanic a, a bit more special because light kind of feels generic. And so the seashell will show dark areas of caves through echolocation. And I have an idea in my head of how that's going to look, but uh, I'll talk more about my, my drawing and lack thereof tomorrow. Anyway, I want the, the character to be the first thing introduced because this is the familiar face, right? In Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, the first character you meet is your partner. And I really like the vibe that you get. You wake up in this unfamiliar place and boom, friendly face, and then boom, you're immediately hit with a task. In this first island world, the idea is for an issue to already be ongoing. But in another world in the future, for example, the carnival, you could go and you could meet whatever the character is, and then something happens, which is why introduced narrative is after introduced character. Next up is play level. Now this is kind of oversimplified, I guess, but from what I understand, and I could be wrong here, the game loop, at least the overall game loop, should be very simple. And I feel like this is as simple as I could get it. You have three options as you play the level. The first thing is to explore. You can explore and simply find nothing because you can go ahead and gather helpful information for the ending. Then you can complete side quests. Now side quests are, it's I use it loosely. Objective completed, if it is, you finalize the character in narrative plot. So this is, you know, the character thanks you for completing it. The plot wraps up. I'm not sure if I want to do this via cutscene or perhaps you can run through the world and I don't know, we'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but then you transport to the house and you go back to exploring the house. In some ways this is oversimplified, but I believe that's how it should be. I got the game loop tonight. I thought it was literally just going to be a diagram I drew on my notebook and then I just went on and looked up flowchart making apps and I found lucid chart and that's on my Trello board now. Back to tomorrow, I suppose. So the game loop is super helpful in just thinking through different parts of the game. It kind of gives me an end goal without giving me the explicit end goal and gave me a lot more ideas just after finishing it and writing stuff down in the Trello board of where to go with the island level. Oh yeah, we will get more into that in the later phases. I definitely need to do more sketching, but getting one done this week, that was a big win. Speaking of all this stuff about working, I kind of came to realize that the devlog isn't really a devlog. Yeah, at least. For my intro to game design class, we had to get $40, $35 worth of books, and two of the books that I got were these boss fight books, and one of them was Splunky by Derek Yu, which is, we read an excerpt in class, and I thought it was really fascinating. And he has an article on his Tumblr that I came across a long time ago, and I like resurf it like resurfaced on my Trello board. It'll be in the description down below, of course. But it's all about getting started and stuff. Right now, the devlog is, oh, this is my process for learning how to make games. I'm drawing this, I'm doing these lessons. But until I have something where the project is called Seashell and I am playing as a pawn, moving around a scene that does things, it's not quite a devlog yet. And so it got me thinking, okay, if I change my idea here, if, you know, maybe prototype is too big, maybe I need to step it back a bit. Because at the current pace, there's no way I'm going to complete the game dev course and have a working prototype of Seashell by March 19th. Be inspiring a community. I think the Discord's been lively, so check and more relevantly seashell prototype and full narrative done and game dev unreal course completed full narrative definitely won't be done i don't think it's worth focusing on that right now i am talking very fast i apologize the prototype itself won't be done now i have four weeks until march 19th a full month left i decided that i'm gonna take these next two weeks to finish tune tanks and then two weeks after that to finish simple shooter those are both sections in the game dev course now the plan has changed a little bit of what's gonna happen and that's okay i think something important about goals is not only meeting them but not meeting them because right now I'm not on track to meet my goal of seashell prototype being made. What has to change? I can either step it up, which I can't do. I'm choosing not to do that because I'm choosing to prioritize my academics in many ways or step it down, which is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm taking a step back and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to use the rest of this time primarily for the game dev course, keep sketching and writing out seashell, fight this battle of art within me. And just by March 19th, open up an unreal project called seashell, create a pawn to move around, maybe use the block model from Blender 
and just move around. By March 19th, this officially becomes a devlog. I finish the game dev course, I have some written stuff and narration and sketches out of the way, and we focus on this week, this is what I did for Seashell, and that thought makes me so excited. It makes me more excited than, oh, I'll work on Seashell and game dev this week. So I think the learning is important for me. I think going through the game dev course and completing it will give me a good sense of success, even if false. And I will definitely have a much better idea of Unreal because so much of it is less unknown to me now. Anyway, that'll be it for today. So the prototype itself will be moved to June 1st. Hopefully once I finish the game dev course, I can make steady progress and have the end of May after my classes are done to just fully two weeks sprint this rest, the rest of this prototype. And the fact that I'm potentially there, that it's not just an idea anymore, that I have a more specific roadmap, at least the next few stepping stones, so to speak, are more concrete. I'm really excited. I want to add a new segment to the devlog too as my outro, and that's just gonna be whatever I wrote on the whiteboard for today. So we're gonna pan over there. And today we have, while the big text in black isn't fully important, I think the thing that is important is that practice is difficult, but when you see how it pays off, it becomes absorbing. You know, all the work for Seashell, it sometimes feels like I'm slugging through it. When you study for a test, sometimes it feels like you're slugging through it. But when you get the game, someone says nice game, or you get that A or B on a test, the studying becomes worth it. And that's your motivation for then doing it. You just, you have to do it first, get the reward, then keep going. Hopefully that makes sense. Just some food for thought for you. And with that, we will wrap up the devlog. So thanks so much for watching. Again, I appreciate the support so much. If you haven't already, join our Discord. Link is in the description down below. But yeah, thanks yet again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.